Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to our Pyrotech Tutorial Spotlight series. So today we are going to be covering the final thing within Pyrotech, and that is refractory burning. Now, refractory burning is of course used to make charcoal, and it works really similar to pit burning. Uh, if we take a look at charcoal, you can see that with standard pit burning, um, a log pile is going to make you the tin charcoal and the, the ash charcoal flakes on a failure chance. The failure chance is 33% and it produces 500 millibuckets of wood tar. But once you upgrade to refractory burning, that same recipe still has the same outputs, but the failure chance drops down uh, to 3%. And then tar bales making charcoal drops down to a 1%. So there is a very big difference on your failure rate when using refractory burning. Not to mention it's just a whole lot easier um, once you have a setup. Uh, to go about making large amounts of charcoal. So before you can get into refractory burning, you're going to have to get a lot of refractory bricks, like a bunch of them, because you're going to need to make refractory blocks. You're going to need to, uh, you don't necessarily have to make, but you can make collectors and drains and doors and glass and igniters and faucets and tanks. There's just a lot of things, a lot of components that you can add on to a refractory burning multi-block. And this is basically just a big multi-block. Now, there is some upgrades. First up, the tank, it doubles in storage capacity up to 8,000 millibuckets, and it can now hold hot fluids. Uh, so if you want to store lava or something like that in a refractory tank, you can. Um, but bear in mind that your wood tar and stuff, it's not going to uh, necessitate you having a refractory tank. But this can be used to store hot liquids. Um, you can also make a refractory door which is valid, but there is one uh, small caveat that we're going to go over uh, when using it. Uh, there was also the refractory drain, which can now store 2,000 millibuckets. It can hold hot fluids, and in addition, it will drain collectors in a 5x5, five five, whereas this one only drains in a 3x3. Three three. Um, and then lastly, the faucet. Uh, whereas the stone faucet, it couldn't use hot fluids, the refractory faucet can now use hot fluids. Um, it had a 10 millibucket per tick rate. Refractory doubles that to a 20 millibucket per tick rate. And before the stone faucet, it would shut off after a thousand millibuckets. The refractory faucet will not shut off after a thousand millibuckets. So it can pretty much indefinitely pump out as long as there's fluid and there's space in the tank that it's sending to. Uh, now bear in mind that when you are setting up a refractory um, wood burning system, you can, if you like using the stone faucet where it only pumps a thousand and it stops, you can use that. Depending on your setup, you may want that um, because it does have that natural shut off after a bucket's worth. It can be beneficial for certain setups. The refractory faucet will indefinitely um, basically pump out until it can't pump out anymore. Um, so depending, they are both beneficial in their own way. Just to kind of showcase the faucet here, if we hit it with redstone, uh, you're going to see that it's going to keep just dumping this out um, indefinitely. If we turn off the redstone, it still continues dumping it out. Um, if we hit it with redstone again, you're going to see it continues dumping out. And the only way to really shut it off is to right click it or once it fills up. Um, so depending, you might, like I said, you may want the thousand um, limit of the stone faucet and have it, you know, turned on and off or turned on on a repeating cycle with a redstone or something like that. So depending... Uh, that faucet you may not necessarily want, but like I said, you can use uh, the standard fo stone faucet. This doesn't matter as far as the refractory multi-block. So for example, if we change this out, it's still going to pour um, exactly the same as it did before. So everything else, it's important that you pick things that say valid for refractory structure, uh, which is the igniter, the glass, the door, the collector, the drain, the block, basically all of these things here. Uh, are valid uh, but the drain since it's on the outside it doesn't really matter now once you're ready to set this up once you have the blocks uh, that you need you're going to build this out kind of like you did with the standard log burning um, we're going to build say a th three by three for example here uh, so we're going to start with our drains our collectors on the bottom um, and of course these are going to collect the liquid and then to make things a bit easier we're going to put in a refractory drain now one thing to note about this drain is um, if you want to save on some refractory bricks, you know, save on six of them, 
Um, if you're only building something like a 3x3, you can still use a stone drain. Even though it does not say it's valid for a refractory multi-block, it's important to note that the refractory multi-block, if I place the strain here, it's not part of, it's not technically part of the uh, refractory. So if you have one of these lying around, you can. If you don't mind the difference in blocks, you can use that um, on an edge like that. Uh, because for example, if I built this out, you know, I'm gonna show you the bare minimum blocks uh, that you need to build this out. And this is also true with the log burning, of course. Um, but generally, whenever you're log burning, you're probably just digging down into the ground, so. Uh, but this right here, if we cover over this top, this is like the minimum uh, blocks that are required for a um, refractory burning system. So at this point, we can load this up with wood and we can treat it just like a standard log burning system um, in this way. But there's a lot of additions that we can add on to this um, to make it a bit nicer. But you can see that this is going to burn. It's not going to cause any issues with that stone drain and that stone drain is still going to grab uh, from those three collectors behind it. So you don't necessarily have to have uh, the better drain, but it does. It covers a bigger area with the 5x5 and has the 2000 millibucket uh, capacity. But you might be thinking about jumping to a 5x5. Don't do that, and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the episode, and I've got a couple example setups to show you. But if we want to, we can make this a whole lot nicer, right? We can take, uh, let's put a refractory drain in here, and let's do the same three by three, but let's make it a whole lot more accessible because this, we have to break blocks. We have to use a flint and steel to start it. We have to remove the top, all of that. Um, you can do something with like a sticky piston to make this a little bit more accessible with a setup like this. Um, but if you're moving on to refractory blocks, you may as well make it a bit nicer. Um, so let's go ahead and build that same three by three. Uh, this one using the refractory drain, but once again, that's not really necessary uh, to have that. Um, and let's make this a bit more accessible. Let's go ahead and change out some of the blocks for a glass so that we can actually see inside of this while it's running. We can actually see our stuff burning and we know even without the particles when it's done. Um, let's go ahead and add a door onto the side and I'm going to go ahead and fill in these corners just to make it look a little bit nicer here. And of course, bear in mind that you can do shapes that aren't square. You can make, you know, like a T-shape or something like that. Um, if you so desire, it doesn't have to be um, square or rectangle or anything like that. You can make more interesting shapes with this. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's, let's make this a whole lot more accessible. Let's put a door on the side of this. Now, when you're placing a door, you need to make sure place it from the inside so that it sets flush um, with the stuff that's burning. If you have it like this, it will cause uh, your burning to fail because there's, it reads that as like an open air space um, when the door is not setting flush. So you do want to make sure that the door is setting flush with, um, with your burnables. Now let's come over, let's say that we don't want to ignite this by hand anymore. Let's come over and let's just put in a refractory igniter here. Um, and then once again, we're going to stick a button, uh, but you can make the redstone a little bit more interesting if you so desire. And then we'll fill this up with logs. There we go. And then of course we could put a tank down here um, or some kind of pumping system. You know, there's a lot of stuff, especially if you have cross mod type stuff, there's a lot you can do as far as transferring that liquid. Um, of course, bear in mind that the drain doesn't have to have the faucet. It can have conduits or something like that attached to it. It's not gonna cause any issues. But if you're using base pyrotech, you know, you're gonna be using the faucets. I do really wish that they would uh, put some kind of channels um, into pyrotech so you could actually transfer the liquid and have a good way to transfer liquids with just pyrotech um, I think channels would be perfect in this mod, but uh, currently no channels at the moment And so now we have a door where we can easily access the inside of this We can step in put our logs in clear out our ash um, And then over here we can hit this igniter button and it's gonna start it up And it's gonna start burning so you can see on the inside. That's what it's gonna look like while it's burning and then once it's done, you'll be able to visually say that it has turned to ash um, upon finishing it. Now, I want to talk about the way that the drain works and the way that it, it pulls liquid in a 5x5 five five range. However, just because it does that, I suggest that you do not do that. What I've got over here is just, this is a 5x5 um, five five interior size uh, refractory burner. So 
Um, it's seven it's seven long but of course this is just the corner bits here and I've got it pretty much set up the same way you can see that the door is setting flush here um, I have an igniter right here I have my drain um, but this is just a straight five by five so I think most people whenever they get to refractory burning they're going to instinctively think okay I'm going to make a five by five because that's what the drain covers but if you recall back when we were talking about log burning I mentioned don't make them too big keep them within a reasonable size because there's issues five by five is actually too big like like this is a five by five by two or five by two by five it's not all that big however if i was to ignite this and we give it a second you know it starts up everything looks fine but if you watch it for just a second what happens is it's too big um, and it just doesn't read the multi-block very well that's one downside about the refractory burning and the pit burning um, with your logs um, it just can't read a very large size whatsoever so you can see that this is now starting to burn away, whereas this one is still behaving, you know, as you might expect, it's still uh, just kind of cooking away, but this one is burning the wood, and it's basically burning it into nothing, so all the wood that I just placed in there is now wasted, and you can see that I didn't get any wood tar, I'm not going to get any ash, no byproducts, nothing like that, it didn't fail, it's just completely gone, it's just too big, so you don't want to make it you don't, just because you can make a 5x5 five five based on the drain doesn't mean that you need to make a 5x5 five five because it will just bust. Uh, but if you want to make a 5x5, five five, this is an example of what a 5x5 five five, um, that works would be like. So we have basically two separate chambers. We have two different doors that access, um, you know, on this side. And on this side, we have two separate igniters. And we're going to head on inside here and we're going to start breaking this up. And so what you what you can see is I have two, basically five by two by two chambers um, that are in here. And I did I did think about sticking a door here, but bear in mind that um, of course if it is not flush, it's going to mess everything up. So it doesn't work on both sides all that well. Um, but then if we come over to here, you know we have another chamber on this side, and you can see I'm not really getting much fail chance stuff at all. Um, it's pretty much just straight charcoal that I'm digging out of here. Um, so you can see that I have um, gotten a whole bunch of charcoal, a few a few charcoal flanks, a little bit of ash, um, but a whole lot of charcoal from that. So you're going to get a lot better output once you switch over to refractory burning. And then not to mention, you know, we've got all this wood tar down in here um, available to us, and I've already pumped out some. So, so you could do something like this. And as long as you get kind of creative and don't just make a 5x5, five five, um, you can pull off some interesting shapes that maybe still utilize the 5x5, five five, maybe have two separate chambers, maybe you do something uh, that's kind of a little bit more of an interesting shape than just a square. Um, that's kind of, I think that's the purpose of the 5x5. Five five. It's not necessarily just to make a 5x5 five five square and, you know, call it a day. Um, because like I said, if it gets very big at all, it's going to just fail every time. Um, so I don't suggest that you do that. So anyways, with that, that pretty much covers the last of our Pyrotech tutorial series. And honestly, once again, I think it's a great mod. Is there room for improvement? Sure. Um, I think that's true for any mod. But I do love where Pyrotech's at. I love the change to early game and, and, and the fact that it is one of very few early game type mods. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of mods that are kind of similar to Pyrotech, but there's very few that create machines that are slow at the start, but can become super fast and be useful all the way up to in game where you have these super fast machines. You know, Pyrotech is one of one of very few. I know IC2 is that way too, where you can actually build up to very very fast machines, um, while it is still kind of an early game tech mod. Because the Pyrotech machines definitely, they definitely flex on other mods machines, I think, as far as speed and just total output that it can do. Uh, you know, being able to cook eight steak per second is quite nice and not something that you generally see within modded um, as far as creating something just crazy fast. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys next time. I'm not sure what the next tutorial that we're going to be covering is, possibly Thumbcraft or something uh, you know, in that vein, we'll see. So, anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.